Hi, I'm Peter Carter. It's June 2019. Just when everyone realized that we are all in a dire climate emergency, the very worst, highest level, dangerous climate change denial has occurred. The news media in the United States published an account of unprecedented evil. What I'm referring to is this Washington Post account, how the White House, the Trump Republican administration, blocked intelligence agencies' written testimony calling climate change possibly catastrophic. It's well known that President Donald Trump has managed to fill his administration with dangerous climate change deniers, denying the catastrophic dangers of global surface warming and climate disruption in 2019 is unprecedented evil because of this. This is the record of atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration from 1700 to June 2019. It is a continuous record of accelerating carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And right now, in 2019, it is accelerating faster than ever. Now just consider these facts of the science. And Yes, CO2 emissions really are practically forever. Here's the quote from the IPCC, the last assessment in 2014. The removal of all human emitted CO2 from the atmosphere by natural processes will take a few hundred thousand years. High confidence. Hundreds of thousands of years. Depending on the amount of CO2 released, between 15 and 40 percent will remain in the atmosphere for up to 2,000 years. Here we're going back in time. We're going back 800,000 years to see the absolute insanity of what is happening with uh, the constant emissions and the acceleration of atmospheric CO2. Here's today, and this is the CO2 record we've seen from 1700. Here's the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration for the past 10,000 years, and here's the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration for the past 800,000 years. And you'll see that the past 800,000 years, atmospheric CO2 has never been above 300 parts per million, and now it's 410 parts per million. Uh, just how totally insane is this to be up here at 410 parts per million of atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration? Well, agriculture started 10,000 years ago, and so we are way above the atmospheric CO2 for agriculture and above the global temperature for agriculture. Homo sapiens, 300,000 years ago, we are way, way above the environment in which Homo sapiens uh, developed, evolved. And we can go right back to Homo erectus, which is a million years ago and more. And we are way, way, way above that. So we are far and away outside the evolutionary experience of our species or the species of hominids that came before us. This accelerating level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is driving accelerating global surface warming, accelerating global climate disruption, accelerating ocean heating, and accelerating ocean acidification. This constitutes a real threat to our survival, to the survival of humanity and the survival of most life on, on Earth. With this knowledge on carbon dioxide, we now return to the national security implication of climate change document. Uh, here is this uh, document I'm just showing you uh, presently, this short paragraph right at the end of the document. It's from the Department of State, the Bureau of Intelligence and Research.
It's a hearing on the national security implications of climate change and the date June the 5th, 2019. But here's the big one. Absent extensive mitigating factors or events, we see few plausible future scenarios where significant possibly catastrophic harm does not arise from the compounded effects of climate change. This bit preceding that uh, important passage is also important. It says that responses to stresses will often require many years to bear fruit. From the time that aggressive mitigation is put into place on a global basis, when emissions are coming down, all this does is slow down the continuing increase in global surface warming and climate disruption. There's this long lag effect between cutting emissions and seeing an improvement in the climate situation as a result of those cuts which of course means that the longer uh, mitigation is delayed uh, the increasing likelihood of total planetary catastrophe. Today the Trump Republican administration continues the Republican strategy of delaying any mitigation measures by the United States and also delaying and sabotaging mitigation measures by the international community to put global emissions into decline. Another reason why today in 2019 the Trump Republican administration obstruction of the facts of the climate change science is unprecedented evil is this. And this is well known because this is the mitigation scenario of the IPCC's 2018 1.5 degrees C special report and this is from that report here's the uh, years I have highlighted 2020 and here's the global carbon dioxide emissions increasing 20 gigatons of CO2 per year up to 40 gigatons of CO2 per year there. As you'll see, the IPCC anticipated that uh, up to 2020 there would still be an increase in global CO2 emissions, which is exactly what's happened. The recommendation, the science to avoid global climate and oceans catastrophe is that global emissions have to decline rapidly from 2020 at the very, very latest. And as was widely reported in the media, emissions have to decline 50% from now by 2030. So the Trump administration campaign of delaying the reduction of CO2 emissions is in actual fact just the latest manifestation of the Republican Party that for decades has been sabotaging United States mitigation measures and mitigation measures under the UN Climate Convention in the annual United Nations conferences. Obstruction and further delaying of a reduction of global carbon dioxide emissions is tantamount to a death sentence to humanity and almost all life on Earth. And hence, the result is unprecedented monumental evil. Everyone knows that the uh, Trump Republican administration is pushing the production, distribution and combustion of fossil fuels, coal, oil and natural gas to the maximum. The document of the national security implications of climate change contains a list, a figure three in the document, a long list from the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, of the projected trends in climate-related impacts. This list uh, says it all, which the uh, Trump administration is doing its best to suppress and keep the facts from the American people. Just consider two of these, heat waves and droughts. Accelerating heat waves of increasing severity, increasing frequency, increasing duration, and the same in the case of droughts. This has already started to impact the United States.
the national security list of climate change impacts with increasing temperatures is crucially important for the American people to know about because they all affect America and they will all affect the American population with increasing severity. Starting from the top, global mean surface temperature increase, global mean sea level increases, Arctic sea ice cover decreases, Another research paper has just been published showing that as Arctic uh, summer sea ice extent declines, there is increasing extreme weather events in the temperate northern hemisphere, so affecting America. Heat waves over land increase in frequency and duration. A heavy precipitation events as a large area in the United States experience affects crops, droughts, intensity and duration increase. Tropical cyclones in North Atlantic and Western North Pacific, intensity and frequency increase. North Atlantic tropical cyclones are what we know as hurricanes. Contrast between wet and dry regions increase. Wet regions become wetter and dry regions become drier. Snow cover in the Northern Hemisphere decreases. There's a water security issue there in some regions of the United States. Permafrost integrity decreases. Permafrost is thawing, it's thawing rapidly, and that's causing some collapse of buildings. But as permafrost thaws, it's also emitting more greenhouse gases. It's emitting more carbon dioxide, and it's emitting more methane. The oceans. Life on land ultimately depends on the oceans, depends on ocean health and ocean integrity. Upper ocean temperatures are already, of course, increasing. Ocean acidification, which is caused by CO2 emissions from burning fossil fuels, ocean acidification is increasing, it's accelerating. Ocean oxygen content is decreasing. That's ocean deoxygenation, and life in the oceans depends on oxygen in the oceans. All of these impacts on the oceans interact together, making each one worse and making the total impact on the oceans much, much worse. We are looking at a dying oceans situation. I'm showing you this uh, graph because it demonstrates in very clear terms the uh, terrible evil of continuing to push more fossil fuel extraction, distribution, and combustion, and thereby more and more and more carbon dioxide piling up into the atmosphere. This is a graph of atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration, the amount of carbon dioxide that has built up in the atmosphere. It starts in 1958. It's from the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, and you can see it starts at 315 parts per million and it goes on to right up to the present time of June 2019 and as you see the concentration now has reached just over 411 parts per million that's the seasonally adjusted concentration that is the highest atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration in five million years this graph also shows this thin mauve colored line here and that is the fossil fuel trend. The fossil fuel CO2 emissions contribution to atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration. And they are both accelerating. They are in sync because fossil fuel carbon dioxide emissions is the main driver of atmospheric CO2 concentration and that is clearly accelerating. And if you look here, this is 2019. So, so far in the first half of this year, 2019, atmospheric carbon dioxide is increasing at a faster rate than it ever has before. We were talking about this latest grossest example of the Republican administration's uh, censuring of the scientific facts on the impacts of global climate change because the facts do not agree with the administration's stance, the lying dangerous climate change denying stance. Trump officials sought to cut several pages of the document, an intelligent department document, on the grounds that this description of climate science did not mesh with the administration's official stance. 
Critics of the testimony included William Happer, a Trump National Security Council senior director who has touted the benefits of carbon dioxide and sought to establish a federal task force to challenge the scientific consensus that human activity is driving the planet's rising temperatures. In another passage, Happer objected to the phrase tipping points when describing how a certain level of warming could trigger de devastating climate-relating impacts. Tipping points is a propaganda slogan for the scientifically illiterate, Happer wrote. They were a favorite of Al Gore's senior advisor, James Hansen. Referring to James Hansen, the world-leading climate change expert, who in 1988, 30 years ago, gave testimony to the American Congress that global warming was real, it was caused by human activity, and it was likely in the not-too-distant future to lead to an increase in extreme weather events. Who is Happer? Uh, William Happer is just one of the most dangerous men in the world. There he is there, presenting at the climate conference, annual climate conference organized by the Heartland Institute, a, a dangerous climate change denying organization and program. And it puts out these conferences to dispute, challenge the reports of the IPCC, among other bona fide uh, scientific assessments of global climate change. He is a director of the CO2 Coalition, a group formed in 2015. That's from the CO2 Coalition website. What this site and this organization does is to promote and persuade that CO2 is nothing but good and beneficial for all of humanity. And therefore, there's no problem with emitting it and uh, to continue to increase the emissions of CO2. And so you see from its website, higher carbon dioxide levels will be beneficial for the developing world. See our white papers. Carbon dioxide benefits the world. See so you for yourself a primer on carbon dioxide and climate. Happer is also on the Academic Advisory Council of the Global Warming Policy Foundation, a lobby group in the United Kingdom whose stated aims are to challenge extremely damaging and harmful policies envisaged by governments to mitigate anthropogenic global warming. Happer was initially named and got some publicity for the Trump administration's National Security Council to spearhead a proposed presidential committee on climate security to advise President Trump on climate issues uh, to challenge the United States National Global Climate Change Research Council that does the regular federal assessments of global climate change. And as reported June the 7th, 2019 by Scientific American, this Trump administration plot to undermine and attack the American climate scientists is being pushed ahead. This article says that scientists reacted sharply to revelations that the White House is discussing ways to force federal researchers to debate the credibility of mainstream climate scientists, saying it threatens to pull experts into conspiratorial exercises that might harm their careers. The pushback came as some White House officials try to formalize a red team, this was reported months ago, a red team debate to question scientific studies that underlie the national climate assessment. The exercise is widely viewed among scientists as an attempt to confuse public perceptions about the impacts of rising temperatures. So the Trump administration is rising to new levels of unprecedented evil. Now back to the Trump administration's climate crime stance. With regards to fossil fuel energy, the dance of Donald Trump uh, was made very clear in his election platform. Here it is, his stance to unleash America's $50 trillion in untapped shale, oil and natural gas reserves, plus hundreds of years in coal reserves. That plan would and is unleashing 
massive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, heating up the surface of the planet, unleashing enormous uncontrollable wildfires in America and other regions of the world, ravishing the planet with unprecedented ferocity, disrupting the global climate, melting the planet with ice sheets, heating, deoxygenating, and acidifying the oceans. Today, that Trump Republican energy plan, which is being acted on, is unleashing a nightmare feedback scenario. Today, the thawing Arctic permafrost is emitting more carbon dioxide and more methane. This is the long-feared global heating climate chaos runaway scenario capable of ending the human race and wiping out most life on the planet, land and oceans. The unleashing fossil fuel Trump energy plan is a plan for unprecedented evil. What I'm showing you now is today, direct from the White House, May the 14th, 2019. And the uh, President of the United States has given this fact sheet the title, President Donald J. Trump is unleashing American energy dominance. More than a hint of megalomania there, I think. President Trump calls this uh, list the golden era of American energy is now underway. It's a list of fossil fuel evil policies implemented. President Trump withdrew from the Paris Climate Agreement. President Trump ended the war on coal by getting rid of Obama-era regulations like the Stream Protection Rule and the Clean Power Plan. Uh, so President Trump believes in clean coal. If ever there was an oxymoron, it's that one. So here's where he took executive orders um, to, as he put it, in the war on coal in uh, March of 2017. Uh, this is the uh, executive order that directs the EPA to suspend, revise, rescind actions uh, for America's clean power plan, which President Trump and his administration are putting an end to. So here his executive order lists the ban on federal leasing for coal production and also restrictions on the production of oil, natural gas, and shale energy. We've already eliminated a devastating anti-coal regulation, but that was just the beginning. Today I'm taking bold action to follow through on that promise. My administration is putting an end to the war on coal and have clean coal, really clean coal. With today's executive action, I am taking historic steps to lift the restrictions on American energy. Second, we are lifting the ban on federal leasing for coal production. Third, we are lifting job-killing restrictions on the production of oil, natural gas, clean coal, and shale energy. President Trump believes in clean coal. That is the ultimate oxymoron. There is no such thing as clean coal. Burning coal for energy is the major cause of air pollution and also water pollution. Air pollution, mainly from burning coal, is killing over 3 million people every year. That's fossil fuel air pollution. In 2019, the world does not need coal. Pushing more coal on the world is pushing a great evil on the world. It has always been a murderous industry, but has now become a planet-killing industry because, of course, coal is the worst polluter of greenhouse gas emissions, mainly carbon dioxide, of course. That makes coal the big killer of millions of people every year today and multiple of millions of people forever into the future. So with these executive orders of getting rid of all America's environmental protection, 
the Trump administration is opening up America to be trashed by unlimited coal mining and unlimited fracking. This is a war against America, the real America, the natural America. It's a war against a future for the American people. It's a war against the world because of its deregulated, unlimited, maximizing of the extraction and combustion of fossil fuels as well as their export. The Trump administration is pushing pollution emissions and atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration higher and higher and higher, and it's already accelerating. President Trump has taken action to open up our nation's abundant natural resources. President Trump signed legislation to open up the Alaska National Wildlife Refuge for energy exploration, fossil fuel, of course. The Department of the Interior held 28 onshore oil and gas lease sales last year. Fossil fuel energy extraction and production and export to the rest of the world. To burn. The Trump administration approved the Dakota Access Pipeline, the Keystone XL Pipeline, and the Uberbus Pipeline. The president signed two executive orders to cut red tape that was holding back the construction of new energy infrastructure, like pipelines. The Trump administration has streamlined permitting for liquid gas terminals. The U.S. Energy Information Administration records the incredible increase in U.S. natural gas exports. The American energy production is soaring to new heights thanks to President Trump's policies. Also soaring to new catastrophic heights, American carbon dioxide emissions, global carbon dioxide emissions, Atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration, atmospheric methane concentration, global surface warming, ocean heating, and caused by carbon dioxide emissions from burning fossil fuels, ocean acidification. Crude oil production hit a record high last year, leaping past the previous record set in 1970. That's right, hard to believe. The American crude oil production hit a record in 2018, higher than the previous record of oil production set back in 1970. Crude oil production spiked 17% in 2018, reaching 10.96 million barrels a day from America. Here's the biggest one. The United States has become the largest crude oil producer in the world. Yes, America is now the largest oil producer in the world. American natural gas production jumped to a new high in 2018, marking the second straight year of record production. That's a shale gas, of course. Now to expanding energy exports maximizing fossil fuel extraction and production, and exporting fossil fuels to the rest of the world to burn. We are exporting more and more energy as production soars. Crude oil exports nearly doubled in 2018, reaching a record average of 2 million barrels a day. Crude oil exports nearly doubled. Coal exports reached their highest level in five years last year, 2018. Under President Trump, the United States became a natural gas exporter for the first time since 1957. When accounting for extraction, distribution, and combustion, shale gas is by far the worst fossil fuel. What is now underway is the end of humanity and the death of most life on Earth.